afternoon, good evening, good morning, everyone. Bonjour, bonsoir, tout le monde. Uh, this is Raymond James Irwin, your Chief Champagne Officer of Fizz Champagne Bar and Champagne Club. And I have the distinct honor and privilege today of being joined by one of my absolute favorite champagne houses and master of the champagne house, Chef Ducave of uh, Delevin et Fils, Monsieur Jean-Christophe Delevin. Bonsoir, Monsieur. Bonsoir. Thank you so much for being with us. We're so honored to have you. Uh, and then we also have the export director, manager extraordinaire of Delevin, who uh, helps, helps keep things busy, uh, Suzanne Ada. We are so grateful to have you with us as well, Susan. Thank you so much for being with us. It's a pleasure. Thank you for inviting us. You're welcome. So um, today we are going to be getting boozy and boozy. Je sais pas s'il y a uh, traduction en français. I don't know what the translation would be in French. Getting boozy and boozy, un peu, un peu pompette peut-être. Um, but uh, <laughs> so we're getting boozy and boozy. What that means is today we're going to go deep into this incredible village in Champagne, one of 320, uh, only one of 17. Though that's Grand Cru. So this is the top of the top, the best. It's it's the best um, wine, best grapes are coming from uh, Grand Cru villages, and that includes boozy. Uh, and specifically, we are going to be talking about Jean Christophe's really amazing um, Brut Nature. So this is uh, with no sugar added. So there's no sugar that's added into this um, during that final final dosing process, the dosage. Um, so it's really just pure. And uh, we'll learn more about that purity of the wine. Um, but so with that, I say we need to open the bottle. I mean, I haven't even opened it. You know, come on, say here, um, Susan. Maybe while we're while we're opening. Um, you know, maybe give us a little introduction to or or uh, what yeah. we're drinking, and you know, of course, Jean Christophe, si vous voulez parler, qu'est-ce que c'est la beauté? What are we drinking? On ne dégage pas. It is a it is a brut nature. Yes. But it is blend of sixty percent pure noir, forty percent chardonnay, uh, blend two years, harvest two thousand fourteen and two thousand fifteen. And uh, it is uh, it's coming to the village of Bouzy. Uh, and uh, Bouzy is village Grand Cru. And I would like to uh, blend the original of my house uh, because this blend is good, is fresh, it is uh, very expressive. And, uh, but oh, I, I don't speak English very well. Suzanne, <laughs> help me, please. <laughs> c'est un, un assemblage qui est yeah. très expressif et original de la maison et euh, que j'aime beaucoup parce qu'il a, euh, a beaucoup de, 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 de saveur, de goût. Oui, c'est vraiment un blend qu'il aime vraiment préférer parce qu'il a beaucoup de saveurs, il a beaucoup de saveurs. Donc oui, c'est seulement deux saveurs de vins. He never blends more than two consecutive harvests. So right now, what Jean Christophe has is 2014, 2015, but I believe that Raymond has yeah. a 2012, 2013. 2012, 2013. Yeah, we have 2012, yeah. 2013 assemblage here. Right. So those don't exist anymore. These are like a dual vintage champagne. All yeah. of his champagnes are not only 100% Grand Cru, but they are also dual vintage champagnes you'll never have more than those two years with no reserve wine when you're talking about the Brut Nature. So let's kind of now well here first of all santé santé monsieur. Cheers. Cheers. I'm across Cheers. the street so I'll oh. just <laughs> cheers. <laughs> Tasting beautifully it I I just I love the fruit I love the fruit quality in this I love the layers the minerality too is exceptional it's so fresh yet what's amazing, I think, Jean-Christophe, this aged for, for what, four or five years or so? Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 And the flavor, it is fantastic. Yeah. 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 It's 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 gourmand, it's très agréable. Yeah. yeah. He's, it's very mouth filling. It's yep. very mouth filling. And he always ages the Brut Nature just a little bit longer. So even though it's a non vintage, it's four or five years on the lees, mostly towards yeah. five years on the lees. And uh, he also, um, just so you know. Légèrement iodé. Yeah, light, yeah. He says you have a light um, smell of the sea 
Yep. You have some iodine smell of the sea because we have those chalk clay soils here in Boozy. So that brings out that kind of minerality. Very much. Um, as this, this used to be all a sea. All of this was a sea uh, back in the- the Paris Basin. Huh? The Jurassic period? Maybe yeah. pre-Jurassic period? About 180 million years ago, I think. Just yeah. a couple, just a few. I think I think my grandparents were alive then, you know, it's- <laughs> Okay, so let's, let's dive in as we're drinking this. Um, let's dive into what makes boozy, boozy. So, you know, Susan, I know you have a, a, a kind of a slideshow. I'd love for you to pull that up and, and let's really look at this amazing Teflon. I would love to as soon as you enable the participant screen sharing. I think we should. I think we should. <laughs> I will be happy to do that. That for sure. There yeah. we are. You should be good to go. All right. Excellent. Thanks. And Jean-Christophe, while she's, while she's getting, while it's getting up here, what was the reason, the raison uh, de, de uh, élaborer un brut nature. Why did you decide to make a brut nature? En fait, on voulait avoir un, un champagne qui soit pur et qui mm. ressemble vraiment à l'exploitation. Et euh, lorsque j'ai goûté l'assemblage 60% pieux noir, 40% chardonnay, qui est vraiment l'assemblage original de la maison, j'ai détecté un soir avec mon épouse en buvant une flûte de champagne. Et là, on a eu comme une révélation en disant, mais le voilà, le, le brut nature que l'on cherche. Il était là, il était devant nos yeux. Et donc, on a fait un test euh, sur donc, euh, un assemblage de deux années et zéro sucre. Je l'ai laissé six à huit mois dans la cave pour qu'il puisse en, un petit peu vieillir, euh, comment euh, s'éduquer. Et puis, lorsqu'on a ouvert la bouteille, bah là, j'ai vu qu'il y avait euh, bah c'est quelque chose de grandiose et, euh, et, et ça, ça va très bien avec euh, les, les huîtres, oysters, euh, avec les crustacés, avec les sushis. Et puis, on a vraiment la pureté du vin qui est là. Yeah. Et, euh, et vous avez une longueur en bouche qui mm -hmm. est très présente. Vraiment. Et tout ça fait que bah, on est tombé amoureux de ce produit-là et, et vous aussi. Yeah. Okay. So I'll try to break that up bit by yeah. bit. <laughs> Oui, tu, tu, as, tu, tu as fait juste, enfin, tu as dit beaucoup de choses là, il faut que je... je yeah, yeah. Beaucoup de choses là. <laughs> um, in fact, so this is his 60-40, 60 Pinot Noir, 40 Chardonnay blend um, is the blend that he prefers um, because he believes that it really speaks, it really expresses itself well. This Brut Nature is made only from the vines in Boozy, by the way. So this is not blended from any other villages. You have what's called in French a monocru when you're drinking yep. this. Um, he really uh, is looking for that purity of yep. expression when it comes to the wines. That's very important to him. And in fact, this blend, the 60, 40 uh, from Boozy, he creates another cuvee also from this blend specifically from the vines in Boozy, but he wanted to try one time um, with his, with his wife, they were searching to figure out what kind of brut nature they could come up with. And they tested, in fact, this blend that normally they would add a dosage to, but they tested it without the dosage. So when he was with his wife, they, they opened up a bottle and they tried it without the dosage and they were just, oh, this is fantastic. This is exactly what we were looking for. And they were very, very happy with it. So they decided to continue with the production. Um, and he and says, that with Susan, he said, he yeah. said eight or 10 years ago, right? Is that what he yeah. said? Yeah. Yeah. I believe the first bottles he made were 2010, 2011. Is that correct? Jean-Christophe? Yes. 2010, yes. 2011. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Those were the first ones he made. And then, um, yeah. And he's just, and 10 was, 10 was, 10 was a very difficult year too. I know Jean-Christophe, especially for the Pinot. Non, parce que comment on sait ce que l'on veut, en fait. Et puis, euh, des vins comme ça, nous, on avait l'habitude d'en boire. Euh, on, en, on en buvait en famille. On, on gardait des vieux millésimes qu'on n'osait pas. Mmh. Mais on n'avait pas l'habitude, en fait, de le vendre. Et, euh, et, et après, on a eu une demande un peu plus importante. Et, euh, et cette demande est arrivée. J'ai dit, tiens, c'est intéressant euh, qu'on puisse partager, justement. Euh, parce que là, on est vraiment sur des vins. On, on est sur des champagnes, mais on est vraiment sur du vin. Donc, c'est une autre éducation. C'est 
c'est plus des champagnes pour, euh, pour faire la fête pour moi. Yeah. yeah. This is this is really a wine for him. This is really a wine. It's not just a champagne uh, just for celebrations, the brut nature. It's really a wine. And brut nature used to be something that the winemakers anyway just made for themselves just to kind of test their skills and see yeah. where they are. But nobody sold a brut nature right. uh, back in, you know, in the early days. Um, but now it's, it's something that's picked up a lot of, a lot of well, traction. And, you it's know, it's people. interesting because we, in the wine world, there's so much, or champagne world, there's so much talk of, of a brut nature and, and the lower, you know, lower dosage in general. Um, right. You know, but it's, and we see a lot more people, they're making Brut Nature, but, you know, at the end of the day, it comes down to the quality of the grapes, the quality of the vines, and what you have to work with, you know, and you are so um, fortunate. I mean, I know you do a lot of work to make it so, but to have this beautiful exposure, I mean, we're seeing this beautiful view of the vineyards in Boozy, but to have, to have vines that allow you to make such great wine without having to add sugar, right? I mean, I think that's the beauty. Yeah. Moi, euh, je pense que je, je peux répondre là-dessus, si tu me permets aussi, oui. Jean-Christophe. Um, so, the thing, you're absolutely right about that. Um, the thing is, Jean-Christophe prefers to harvest a few days later than the others. Um, he goes around to every vineyard plot and he tastes the grapes. Um, And he decides, okay, I'm going to start picking here first. I'm going to start picking there first, depending on how the grapes taste to him. So he's really creating the wine specifically from his own grapes, specifically um, harvesting them yep. so that the maturity levels and the sugar to ratio, uh, acid levels will be for his champagne. Yeah. What, it, is my, it is my father learn this technique. Because yeah. my father say, taste the grape. It is very important. If you're good maturity, it is good vine. Yeah. It, it, it is simple, but when il faut, il faut, il faut le faire, quoi. il faut le réaliser. And yeah. a lot of people don't do that. I mean, it's, it's, I would say that's such an artisan approach, you know, and, and truly you are an artisan de champagne. We say ça. Um, ça. And, and I think that it is, you know, sometimes a lost art, right? When you see so much champagne that's just coming from very large homes, very large houses, it's not that artisan where you're, you're tasting every row, you're tasting a grape, you're really, you're really intricately getting into the soil like we're seeing there. I mean, so, so talk about the soil that is, um, that is boozy. Talk about the, the, the terroir, the exposures. What do we have? Jean-Christophe. The terroir aujourd'hui, on est sur de la craie et puis notre chance, c'est une exposition plein sud. Mm -hmm. Donc, euh, avec une énorme maturité. Euh, et euh, on, est, on est surtout basé comme un cirque. On est comme un cirque romain. Donc, euh, le soleil se lève à l'est, se couche à l'ouest. Et les vignes sont baignées toute la journée en été de 5 h à 23 h. Du, à 23 h. Mm -hmm. Donc, euh, grâce à ça, on a... Bon, bien sûr, on a des veines de sol qui sont différentes. Et on a aussi une richesse avec la terre noire qui avait été apportée par nos grands-parents qui viennent de la forêt. Et euh, tout ça fait que ben, pour les pinots noirs, il n'y a pas de chlorosphérique euh, ou très peu. Et tout ça a été apporté naturellement parce qu'ils ont fait un très, très gros travail. Et nous, aujourd'hui, ben, on, on en récupère les fruits. Yeah. Suzanne, uh, si tu peux te traduire. Yeah, I'm going to translate. So, yeah, this chalk chalk and clay soils. He's talking about the south facing slopes uh, in Boozy. We have uh, what they refer to as a Roman circus because it's a rounded mound shape and kind of in a rounded circle shape. So a Roman circus. And as you saw in the previous photos, yes, we're bordered by that beautiful forest and that black and element, uh, black soil with the elements and the iron that comes from it, it trickles down into the uh, into the vines and feeds feeds the vines and so we have very little uh, problems if you work naturally it's it's fantastic yeah. yeah yeah and I mean yeah having that maybe you can go back to that picture so I think it's a great thing to see with the forest you know the the mountain of Hans right Montagne de Hans that's where you all are, are located on that southern part with that beautiful southern exposure yeah, yeah. beautiful you can yeah. see it bordered there Yeah, yeah, this is, you can see uh, on a clear day, we can see uh, all the way through to the Côte Blanc on one side, 
We can see uh, over towards uh, Chalon, we can see, uh, qu'est-ce qu'on peut voir? Uh, Epernay, non? On peut voir Epernay? Oui, hein, c'est Epernay, Chalon. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, beautiful so, village. I mean, you know, what I love is, is we were talking yesterday, Susan, that, you know, Buzi is such a tiny village. You have these beautiful vineyards yeah. around the village, but the village yeah. is très petit, very, very, very small, um, you know, and, and uh, we just have these gorgeous vines. So um, that's yeah. in the vineyard there, have these south-facing slopes. You have the forest that kind of helps protect uh, right. the vines. We see it there on that southern part. Right. Um, and, and as I said, and what's amazing is, so we have sunlight throughout the day. That's the other thing Jean-Christophe was saying, yes. um, because, you know, the sun rising in the east and setting in the west, since we are south facing, we receive that sunlight all throughout the day. Right. We have cool breezes coming down from the forest with some warmer breezes coming up from the valley. And it's just really the optimal growing yeah. conditions for Pinot Noir. Yeah. yeah. So again... This is why people need to be drinking more boozy Pinot, more, more yes. boozy champagne, because it really is this optimal exposition, uh, which is yes. probably, you know, one of the big factors why it became Conclu and one was one of the original Conclu, you know, so um, I think it's also important for people to know, you know, there's, there's been um, villages that have gained that Conclu status really only in the last 20 or so years, you know, whereas yes. Boozy has been one of the original, and uh, I think that's important to note. Yeah, absolutely. And we can even go further and talk about the uh, Boozy Rouge. Yes, which, let's talk which, about that because that's a huge, Boozy Rouge is a huge factor in making so many great um, rosé champagnes. Yes, yes, especially Delavins. <laughs> yes, we especially sell. We've been selling it, Jean-Christophe. We've been selling the uh, Je vends le rosé, le plus tradition et le grand cru aussi, le, le trois de gamme. Yeah, well, the, the Boozy Rouge is a host historic wine. It was being yeah. uh, produced in Boozy even before Champagne was produced from Boozy. So Amazing. it's a it's a red wine um, that comes from Champagne and it's made from the Pinot Noir that's grown in Boozy. Um, just a little image here you can see on the left, you've got uh, Pinot Noir grape bunch that's the traditionally used to create the white part of the champagne blend where we, it's, it's pressed stem and all when it goes into the press. But on the right, you have what they call in French grappe lache, which is the loose bunch of Pinot Noir that's also grown in Boozy. And that's specifically used for uh, this Boozy Rouge that Jean-Christophe creates with his family. Um, they they de-stem uh, the clusters and press it by hand. Wow. Um, and then he, uh, yeah, in his, in his resin tank. La même chose, il faut de la maturité. Yes. Il faut de la maturité yes. pour faire un bon rouge, quelque chose de bien fruité, de très élégant, pas yeah. acidulé. Et lorsque vous faites l'assemblage blanc et rosé, et eh ben là, d'un seul coup, vous avez des choses qui euh, explosent au niveau saveur. Yeah. Et, euh, et, et j'aime faire des rosés qui soient... Euh, Assez typé. Voilà. Yeah. So he uses this red wine that he produces himself to create his rosé. He blends the white part of the champagne blend with 43% Pinot Noir and 40% Chardonnay. Then he adds 17% of this house-made Boozy Rouge, hand-pressed Boozy Rouge. And he's talking about how important it is to have that good maturity yeah. when you're creating that red wine so that when you put, blend it together to create the rosé, it just explodes yeah. Yeah. with expression and yeah. flavors. Well, yeah. and I, I mean, think about that, that process, right? I mean, you're now, you're, you're, you're making, you could say in a way, you're making kind of three wines, right? You have that first press of, of, of you know, making, making the, the, the blanc, but then you are making your red wine and then you're blending them together, right? I mean, it's this incredible elaborate process of elaborating and I think you know the craftsmanship that that uh, Jean-Christophe that you do I mean it speaks for itself in your rosé it is just such a sumptuously delicious rosé and that really only comes from incredible winemaking and incredible you know grapes and boozy rouge that you have yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he, he, he appreciates beaucoup le rosé, justement. He dit que t'es vraiment un vrai uh, uh, artisan talentueux. Yes, c'est ça. ça. 
Thank you very much. You're very welcome. <laughs> yes, uh, and he wanted to make a rosé, by the way, that would be really versatile. Yes. And when you have this, this plot of, of grappelage, mm -hmm. very mature, wonderful Pinot Noir, and you blend that red wine from that with the champagne blend, you get these kind of things like black pepper and yeah. cinnamon and kind of licorice and you get all these yeah these wonderful earthy flavors that blend with the champagne and you just it's amazing talk about a great food pairing champagne yeah, yeah. very very gourmand yeah yeah wonderful. A little photo of the harvest he's very hands-on this is uh, jean christophe and his wife in boozy harvesting um just working, looking at the grapes. Yeah. yeah. Um, as I said, yeah, working on those maturity levels, um, very important. Tu veux discuter un petit peu aussi l'idée de lever indigène et pourquoi la maturité des yeah. raisins, ça ajoute justement uh, la possibilité d'en faire? Ah, en fait, c'est une technique qu'on a toujours fait, que mon père faisait. Euh, on on, on essaye de déguster les grains pour avoir la meilleure maturité, le plus de sucre naturel. Aujourd'hui, grâce au, un petit peu au réchauffement climatique, il y a des vendanges qui sont plus tôt. On ne met plus du tout de sucre ajouté dans les vins. Donc, c'est vraiment du sucre naturel qui fait la fermentation. Et euh, dans notre cuverie, ben, on a la chance euh, qu'au bout de 5-6 jours, ben, les vins, les jus de raisin, ce, la fermentation se déclenche naturellement yeah. voilà. donc euh, on laisse la nature faire ensuite les cuves communiquent entre elles mmh. et, euh, et tout part comme ça naturellement et je trouve ça formidable parce que c'est les réelles levures bah, de la maison de la veine quoi, qui, euh, qui, qui font le vin et, euh, et on a juste à regarder et puis à surveiller et, comme vous pouvez garder un enfant quoi. voilà et, okay. et ça, je trouve ça magique parce que voilà, c'est juste nous qui le faisons. Enfin, enfin c'est juste eux qui le font pour nous. So, in fact, when he's working with the good maturity and the grapes like this, um, he's able to have that first fermentation process spontaneously occur without adding any sugar. He right. says it's a little bit thanks to global warming. They're harvesting a little bit earlier every year, but He's also able to have that good sugar levels in his grapes. So yeah, he can have that spontaneous um, fermentation. And uh, also with the native yeasts that are already present in the grapes, the indigenous yeast on the grapes, he said the, he, when he puts them into the wine vats, the stainless steel wine vats, he says the, the, they communicate with each other the wine vets communicate with each other. He says, you really just let nature do its thing. You don't intervene at all. And um, he says, it's like raising children, just let nature yeah. take hold and you get something perfect. You don't have to do anything more. And I think again, back to the philosophy of the house, that's just such an important thing for people to hear and to understand. And, you know, really is about making it as natural as possible. So there's as little intervening as possible, that you have to do as little as possible, which we'll, we'll talk about more about what you guys are doing with that in a second. But also yeah. to that fact, you know, not as many people understand the whole idea of indigenous yeast or the idea of, you know, using the yeast that's there that the grapes know, right? Because it really becomes that marriage in the tank because I mean, they, it recognizes it versus getting, you know, um, a yeast, uh, uh, commercial yeast, right? I, and I think that's really neat that that's what's used in this wine. Yeah, and, and that's, the, that's what he was saying also is this is really the Delavin's grapes. Right. He's, he's grown each and every vine like a little bonsai plant. So he knows each and every one very well already. But so what you're really tasting in the bottle is down to the natural indigenous yeast. You're really tasting Delavin's grapes and right. nothing more. Um, La seule chose où il faut être très vigilant, c'est qu'il... Il faut avoir des très belles grappes et il faut aussi être très attentif et très propre au niveau du matériel. Yeah. Parce que yeah. les levures, les levures indigènes, bah c'est comme les hommes. Il y en a des bons et il y en a des mauvais. <rire> et 
Mais il faut surtout surveiller les mauvaises levures parce qu'elles yeah. peuvent vous faire un travail exécrable. Et là, ça peut être pire que tout. Mais yeah. lorsque vous êtes assez soigneux, quand vous avez des récoltes qui sont saines et que comment vous avez des, du matériel qui est très bien nettoyé, qu'on fait attention à tout. Et euh, quand je dis très bien nettoyé, c'est que de l'eau chaude et il euh, n'y a pas de produit. Hein. Je n'aime yeah. pas les produits. Et, euh, et quand vous faites ça, ben, en fait, ben, ça, ça démarre naturellement et, et ça fait des belles choses. Mais il yeah. faut être vigilant, regarder au moins deux fois par jour et savoir vers quelle direction elle va. Voilà. Yeah. You, he says you just, you guide it. You have to make sure that everything is, is clean. Everything is, he cleans everything with just uh, hot water. No, no, no products are used, but you have to kind of guide it. Nevertheless, even though you're keeping everything very natural, you have to be sure you're paying attention because he says, He says like yeast, yeasts are like people. You got some good ones and you got some bad ones. So you have to pay attention to who's doing what. But as long as you keep everything very clean and uh, pay very close attention, you got come up with some beautiful things. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And you know, just quickly, lastly, before we move on to this, you have up here the sugar to acid ratios and, and you kind of touched on it, but I just wanted to, to add a little bit more to that. You know, when, when it comes to making champagne, it's A, it's very difficult to do. And a big part of that is because you need the right amount of sugar, you need the right amount of acid, right? You really have to get it at this optimal um, maturity, um, you know, the optimal bricks, everything has to come into place so perfectly. So that way the wine can age. I mean, and that way everything is very balanced. And, and you know, I know that you take such care in doing that. It's a very important process to getting right. Uh, alors, il, il te demande justement l'idée, le, la le conception, euh, sucre et acide, euh, right. comment savoir, yeah. quel est le, le bon équilibre, comment dé déterminer le bon équilibre là-dessus. Ben, C'est-à-dire qu'avant, si vous voulez, je, je faisais des mesures, ben, comme tous les œnologues, on fait des, des tests en disant il y a tant de sucre, tant d'acidité. Et puis, on, ça nous donnait à peu près la tendance. Aujourd'hui, je ne le fais plus du tout. Je ne le fais plus du tout parce que euh, simplement en, en testant et en goûtant, en fait, on sait exactement où est-ce qu'on en est. Et ça, c'est euh, de la pratique. Euh, Aujourd'hui, euh, j'ai 44 ans. Euh, et ça fait euh, 25 ans que je fais ça et plus et toutes les années sens. où j'ai fait ça avec mon père et, euh, et donc je sais et l'idée elle est très simple mm. vous prenez une pomme vous goûtez une pomme vous savez si cette pomme elle est bonne ou si elle est trop acide mm -hmm. le raisin c'est exactement la même chose mm. Et quand vous avez ça dans la bouche, ben vous vous dites, ça y est, on est bon. Mm. Et du coup, ben, vous savez, en fait, et vous arrivez même à déterminer, à savoir dans combien de temps cette vigne-là, elle va être mûre et elle va être prête pour être vendangée. Yeah. Voilà. C'est comme ça que ça se décide, mais tout ça, c'est des sensations, c'est du ressenti, c'est de la pratique. Puis après, ben, ça devient notre métier, quoi, quand même. Hein. Yeah. Notre job. <rire> Yeah. <laughs> he, he's been doing this for 25 years and he did it following his, his grandfather and his father around and he says it's like tasting an apple when you bite into an apple you know if it's too acidy or too sweet he says grapes it's exactly the same thing but he's being a tiny bit modest I think and I'm sure uh, Raymond agrees with that because uh, not anyone can just go and bite into a grape and know <laughs> Right. that is going to make perfect champagne in four years time. Um, yeah. yeah, it <laughs> doesn't really chance. work like that. C'est la, la chance d'avoir une exploitation à taille humaine. He says he's, he's lucky because his, um, his exploitation, his domain is not very large. Right. And that's an advantage because he can go around to what he was saying before. He can go around to each plot And by tasting, say, all right, I need to pick here first, or right. I need to pick there first, and know which one is going really, to... I mean, you can there. really get in the vines, right? I mean, you can yeah. really be so hands-on. So yeah. speaking of that, how many... Uh, combien d'hectares avez-vous? How many, how many hectares? Nine. Nine. 
Okay, so then that's about 23, 24 or so acres, I think, roughly. So, Got me. I'm bad at okay, now. Okay, you've been you've been out of out of the states game, yeah. So it's it's small. <laughs> the point is it's small. Yeah. Yes. Are at yes. Harvest. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's and and it is it's nice. Uh, it's it's really fun at harvest time, as a matter of fact, because he just he'll throw anybody into the van that's next to him and say, "Come on, let's go taste the grapes," and we all go with the, the dog, the kids, whoever whoever <laughs> happens to be there at that moment. We'll all go up into the vines and start uh, and start eating grapes. Yeah, it's really fun. Um, you've got some Pinot Noir juice coming out of the out of the press there. Um, this is this is on the left. We won't talk about the dosage uh, because you don't have any in the brut nature. Right. But suffice to say that the um, and the this dosage. Is family. Huh? What's yeah. that? This is your family. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he's. They have three. The Delavan have three children, and of course, Galip the dog. Yeah. And um, everything is done in stainless steel tanks and uh, in an iron, those that's, that's an iron ceramic lined tank. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course you see the Bouzy Rouge tank in the back that yeah. has a tank, that's the Bouzy and Rouge. Jean-Christophe, talk about um, the, the house style and why you choose to do only stainless versus having, using, using any barrels. Alors moi, je choisis les cuves plutôt que le bois parce qu'en fait, je veux avoir le, le style du vignoble. En fait, je veux, je veux vous transmettre ce que l'on peut avoir du vignoble de Bouzy. Alors, quand on met en, en barrique, ça peut être très bien fait aussi. Il peut y avoir des très belles choses. Mais moi, aujourd'hui, je veux avoir la pureté du vin sans avoir automatiquement d'ajout de, de boisé ou, ou quelque chose qui arrondit les choses. Moi, je veux que ce soit vraiment sur la pureté. C'est pour ça aussi que je fais des champagnes aussi sans fermentation malolactique, mmh. parce que je veux garder l'acidité naturelle des vins. Et cette acidité naturelle des vins, moi, je, je l'aime beaucoup parce que c'est grâce à ça qu'on a une longueur en bouche mmh. et que lorsque vous buvez du champagne de la veine, une fois que vous l'avez bu, bah, vous avez encore toutes les arômes qui sont ici, là, mmh. là dans la gorge. Mmh. Et ça, c'est pour moi la magie d'un vin et du champagne. Yeah. Voilà Merci. pourquoi je choisis les cuves, parce que je trouve que pour moi, le, le, le vignoble, ça transpire plus. Mmh. Euh, on sent plus le vignoble. Yeah. Et ça, c'est ma, ma version des fers. Oui. He's, he really wants to give you pure, direct from the vines. So he says oak is, is good maybe for other champagnes. You can make something perhaps uh, with oak. That's, that's very nice, but it's not his philosophy. He prefers to give you something that's a complete unadulterated form of the vine. So you're getting really the, again, pure and natural uh, expression from the grapes without them being rounded out from the edges or of the acids or anything like that. That's why he does not do malolactic fermentation either because he really, he doesn't do fining. He doesn't do malolactic fermentation. He doesn't use oak. He only uses those two consecutive years because yes, he wants to give you something pure and that's really, you're getting the vines directly into the bottle without okay. being without being interfered with as much as possible. And I think that's such a I, I love that statement, you know, from really you're getting from vine to bottle because you're not you're not adulterating with anything. It's just the pure, right? It's just so pure and accentuating that purity. And then and I think you said when it, uh, for the with the also not doing the mallow was because you know you had a longer um, you know, a, a, a greater mouthfeel, longer finish. It yes. adds a lot more to that, keeping that mallow versus taking yeah. it away. Yeah, the mellow lactic, uh, mellow lactic fermentation transforms the natural grape acids from right. malic acid into lactic acid. And when you do that, that's what they call rounding out the corners. They're rounding out the edges in French. It's a French expression, but in fact, you're altering those acids yep. when in fact, if you keep those acids intact. Now, again, 
if you don't have your good grape maturity and you don't have the good quality grapes, this is not even a possible thing to do. It's not even, it's done. Right. I mean, you have to do that. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. it's really not possible for some people to and even. You have uh, a drink a glass uh, champagne, and now uh, you have uh, mm -hmm. aroma. Oui. You taste yeah. it. You taste yeah. It. And so yeah, it lingers on the palates. It rests into your salivary glands here, and you really can feel that the chalk soils start to oh, come yeah. out at the end. You start to feel that, yeah. Yeah, it just it, it creates a truly complete wine that that uh, you know you're just you're not you're not doing anything you're not you're not changing it it's identity it's the right. same identity and I think that's an important thing that I'm just hearing really about yeah. with house style it's all about keeping that identity from vine to to glass right right so I, yeah. exactly that's it exactly it so yeah as you see here that's after the first fermentation. So you have the clear wines here, yeah. um, the stainless steel tanks, no fining, no malolactic fermentation. Um, and also these are low sulfite champagnes. Um, Jean-Christophe mentioned earlier that they are working towards their organic certification, that he's uh, using things like willow bark and nettle to treat the vines now. Um, and that he, he's already been working naturally for for a few years yeah. now, but now he's going towards organic certification. And as he's been doing so, he discovered that in fact, um, the sulfite levels in his champagnes have always been lower than organic limits Incredible. for sulfites in champagne. And it's something he, they were just doing naturally. Incredible. That's yeah. incredible, Jean-Christophe. I mean, just again, how natural your wines are. I just can't stress that enough, you know, for people that, that are looking for wine that is, th that's not adding all of these things. That's just natural with what you have and caring so much. I mean, as, as we all know, it's so important with how you care for your vines. It's so important with how you care for the soil and for the health of the soil, because that translates into great grapes. And, um, you know, we're seeing more organic methods and, and processes because it's just showing better life for the grapes, for the vines, etc. We, oui, alors là, là, je pense que oui, tu aurais un truc à dire là-dessus. Hein? <laughs> ah, non, mais l'idée, c'est de de vous transmettre euh, le plus naturellement possible euh, le, le, le vignoble de Bouzy. C'est ça qui est intéressant parce que aujourd'hui, on a de plus en plus de possibilités grâce à des personnes qui ont fait des essais avant nous. Et, euh, et là, on peut utiliser aujourd'hui des matières naturelles. Et, euh, et, on, et moi, je suis convaincu qu'on peut utiliser des plantes et que les plantes peuvent comment, nous aider à, à soigner de la maladie. Et là, pour avoir fait quelques essais, parce qu'avant de partir en organique, euh, j'ai fait des essais parce que je voulais être sûr de moi. Et on, on a des résultats qui sont incroyables. Ils sont incroyables. La, la végétation, elle part vers le ciel, vers le soleil. C'est beaucoup plus lumineux euh, et vous avez, euh, vous avez des, des... Moi, des... je prends toujours l'exemple, j'ai un vieux pinot noir. Je ne sais pas si vous vous traduisez euh, maintenant, peut-être que j'en dis trop. Ah oui, oui donne-moi donne deux minutes pour ah, traduire oui. et puis on continue après. He's, he's saying that he did some trials first, uh, working with the organic processes, um, doing just to what they call tisane, you know, teas, where these concoctions like... Uh, like they also do with biodynamic. And he said, the plants just Camel were life, yeah. reaching, reaching towards the sky. It was, it was amazing. It, he's, it, the results were excellent. So he's continuing and moving forth with this. And he said that he, he can do this thanks to others who came before him, who did also work this way and uh, through trial and error. He's, and working with their experiences as a base He's a, he can move forward with this. And he was going to give us the example of an old Pinot Noir vine. Bon, alors, as he, uh, le, le, la vigne qui... Mais ce, ce, ce vieux Pinot Noir, en fait, se tombait avec le poids de la végétation, plus il grandissait. Et là, avec la prêle, en fait, la prêle rajoute du calcium au brun. Et ça lui a permis de se rigidifier. Et mmh. c'est surtout que ça fait, une, ça fait de la brillance sur les feuilles. Et euh, du coup, ça fait beaucoup plus de photosynthèse et ça, 
ça va vers la lumière, ça entraîne le végétal vers la lumière. Et du coup, ils étaient beaucoup plus droits. Et on a une ligne qui sentait, qui, qui respirait, on sentait qu'on l'aidait naturellement. Et puis, ben, quand vous faites ça, et ben, je trouve qu'on est beaucoup plus serein aussi. Euh, et, euh, et on a vraiment l'impression de, de lutter euh, bah, d'une belle façon voilà. alors les autres produits existent hein, euh, je les ai utilisés, euh, je ne les renie pas mais aujourd'hui je trouve que cette technique là euh, est, est plus saine, plus envieuse et, et plus dans ma philosophie des choses il voilà. faut savoir évoluer, la maturité puis après chacun fait comme il le désire mais je trouve ça vraiment formidable Yeah, he was talking about an old Pinot Noir vine that he had that was just kind of drooping over from the weight. It was not really uh, uh, able to hold itself up. And he started treating it with uh, this something called prel. I, I think the translation from prel is horsetail, I believe is what prel is. Or, or I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Or maybe it's willow bark. Anyway, it's a natural. Um, and he said, you could see the leaves, it's like its skin was getting on the leaves were, were, was shinier, it was it was starting to spark, shine really and, and the plant lifted itself up and it was reaching towards the towards the sky with the photosynthesis working better. And he said it's, he says other people can use other things, yes, but this is something that uh, he, he, he feels um, has more serenity about doing when he uses these natural products in the vines because um, the vines are responding and they're creating a, a, a kind of natural immune system. I uh, forgot also to tell you, he just planted, by the way, a new vineyard back in March, 2020. And in fact, he did a co-planting um, so that the different vines, and he's got some Massal vines as well, and he did it this way so that the vines would create their own immune system, like a community, keeping each other healthy. Yes. And I just think that's such a beautiful sentiment that the vines would keep each other healthy. Et ce qui est génial, c'est que vous avez l'impression de pouvoir communiquer en fait avec les plantes yeah. et communiquer avec la vigne. Et c'est ça qui est super quand vous les voyez réagir. On se dit tiens, on s'est pas trompé, on les a réellement aidés. Voilà. Yeah. He, he says you feel like you can really communicate with the plants when you see them reacting and you're, you know you're communicating with them and you're having an understanding and you, and you can say to yourself, we were really able to help. We were really yeah. able to help them. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Wonderful. And, and so this here, I'll, I'll go back, Susan, uh, just to show everybody that is the beautiful sellers there um, of Delaven, And we can see bottles in um in the pupitre they're getting ready it looks like to to be riddled yes <laughs> ça c'est un petit trésor ça c'est un petit trésor qui m'est transmis par euh, mon arrière grand-père par mon grand-père et mon père ils ont tous creusé ça à la main et euh, c'est super parce qu'on a 8 mètres de profondeur il fait 12 degrés toute l'année qu'il fasse plus 40 ou moins 40 euh, et, euh, et avec une hydrométrie qui est tout à fait constante et qui est idéale pour, euh, pour euh, conserver le champagne. Yeah. Donc ça, c'est quelque chose dont j'en suis, suis très fier, très, très fier. C'est comme un peu un bijou pour moi. Voilà. Yeah, this, he says he, this, he inherited this from his great grandfather, his grandfather and his fa father was hand dug with the pickaxes and it's, it's his inheritance and for him it's a jewel it's his jewel he's very very proud of it because it's really his and did he did he say about eight meters or how how long was yeah, it eight meters eight meters underground and a constant uh, temperature of 12 oh, uh, centigrade yeah uh, celsius uh, no matter how, what the temperature is outside you've got the humidity and in fact two meters lower you've got an underground river as well um, so it really it's just it's perfect and he's, he's how many been... how many bottles at a time are are in the caves a peu près euh, on a à peu près 260 000 bouteilles Do, 260,000 yeah yeah so yeah. it's small you know i mean it's 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 a small production it's, it's good to remind yeah. people that what we have yeah, here... petite production et à savoir que dans cette production-là, vous avez entre, euh, entre 3 et, 
et, et 8 ans de stock. Yeah, you have vous avez des bouteilles qui sont 8 ans, vous en avez d'autres qui sont 3 ans. Donc, vous voyez, yeah. c'est un chiffre qui finalement ne veut pas dire grand-chose. La seule chose qu'aujourd'hui, on peut vous dire, c'est qu'on peut vous sortir du 2012 à, à, 2000, à 2000, euh, 2019. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It's it's. He says it's it's a from three to eight, three to eight, wow, eight ans de stock. Huh? Oui. Three to eight years of stock. Yeah. Um, in there. Well, 2019, I think he said right now. From 2012 to 2019. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. And yeah. pretty much most every majority of the champagne is hand riddled, correct? The majority is hand riddled. Yeah. Incredible. Who's yeah. doing all the hand riddling? Say, say, votre famille? Hey, toi, Susan? Is it? Is oh, oh, no, moi, no. I don't do this. No, this, no. Yeah. Jean Christophe, c'est toi, hier, one, qui font ça, no? Ah, il y a des femmes aussi, hein? Maëlle, elle fait ça? Maëlle, elle tourne les bouteilles, mais ça, c'est pour le plaisir. Elle ne va pas le faire ah. tous les mois. Oh, of course. D'accord. On a des femmes qui viennent avec nous. On est, on est à quatre à les tourner. Voilà. Il y en a yeah. à quatre à tourner ça tous les matins. Mais yeah. euh, c'est important, ça fait partie. Euh, voilà, tout le monde doit savoir tourner une bouteille. On arrive au matin, on descend en cave et on va tourner les bouteilles. They, they arrive in the morning and they start turning bottles. I've seen Jean Christophe do it. I've seen some of the people that work with him do it. He says he's got some women who come down and do it. That was, um, in fact, if you ever come to visit Champagne Delavan, you'll see in the cellars they have a beautiful mural of Jean Christophe's grandfather mm. in the cellars turning bottles because apparently that was his little meditation room it was his favorite thing to do was go down there and turn the bottles and uh, he did it until the day he died he would go wow. down there every day turning the bottles Moi, je fais ce travail là depuis l'âge de 9 ans je le faisais avec he, mon papa he says he started bien. turning bottles at the age of nine with his father je faisais la course pour tourner les <laughs> bouteilles avec mon papa et un jour, il est plus vite que lui, et il m'a dit, ben voilà, tu vas pouvoir les faire tout seul. <laughs> he says, he says they used to have a race, whoever could turn the bottles the fastest, and uh, when he could beat his father, his father said, okay, that's it, now it's your job. Yeah. So, yeah. why, why Jean-Christophe, have you, you know, in the age of, of mechanics and mechanisms and all that, have you decided to keep doing uh, riddling predominantly by hand versus using the, the gyro palette. Alors, euh, j'ai aussi une petite partie qui est faite en gyro palette, hein, mais euh, les pupitres, ce qui est superbe, c'est pour tous les millésimes et les bouteilles spéciales. Parce que, comment sur les millésimes, ben, vous les gardez un peu plus longtemps. Et donc, euh, à la main, ben, on peut regarder s'il reste encore un petit peu ou s'il faut refaire un, un tour de plus. Une machine, c'est un gros réveil. Donc, euh, elle va faire son travail et puis elle va s'arrêter là. Pour des qualités standards qui ont euh, entre 15 mois et puis, euh, on va dire, 30 mois ou 36 ou 42, euh, mm. ça fait du très bon travail. Mais après, sur des millésimes ou des bouteilles spéciales, je trouve que c'est mieux sur pupitre. Yeah. Voilà. Ça ne va pas vous changer le goût, ça ne va pas vous changer, mais vous êtes sûr d'enlever de, le dépôt qui s'est créé et de faire un travail qui sera impeccable. Mm. Yeah, yeah. He 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 says he says especially for prestige cuvées, special bottles, millésimes, etc. It's always better to riddle them by hand. Um, the he he's and it's it's a wake up for bottles that have been sitting in the cellar for a long time. It's a nicer way to wake them up to put them on the riddling racks than to stick them in a machine and have that done very quickly. Um, I think we were talking about this yesterday. Yeah. And, you know, I was telling people one day if they had a teenager at home that they would totally understand this. But um, if if you let something rest in the cellars for four years and then you know very rudely wake it up yeah. with a <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's not going to appreciate it very much. You know, the, if you can wake it up a little more gently, then yep. it tends to react a little better for you. Wonderful. Yeah. And how long it, it, does it take for the riddling for your bottles? A peu près trois semaines. Yeah. Three weeks. It takes three weeks. Yeah. Car qu'une machine met une semaine. Yeah. With a machine, it's one week, and by hand, it's. Parce qu'elle travaille la nuit. Nous, on travaille que la journée. 
Yeah, <laughs> the machine can work at night and they only work during the day, he said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wonderful, wonderful. And so then let's see, we have, we have this beautiful bottle that we're drinking today, but I know you have some other lovely champagnes and a couple of which we have. Um, and and, and uh, so what are the other champagnes that, that people can enjoy of Delavan if they come to France or perhaps come to me? Yeah, and perhaps come to you. Yeah, you'd prefer they go to you. Yes, <laughs> both. Or you can start bringing them to France oh, with I'm, you. Oh, there, on our next champagne trip, we're absolutely going to Delavan. Oh, that would be fantastic. We'd be really happy to see you. Um, yeah, so obviously we have uh, cham more champagnes than just the Brunetcher and just the Rosé. Um, most of them, as I was saying before, these are monocru. So you have listed here the champagnes that are monocru, which means they only come from um, the boozy vines. He also has some vines in Cramont and the Côte de Blanc that were given to him by his mother. Um, and he makes a single harvest uh, Blanc de Blanc from just those vines in Cramont. Um, then of course, he's got a couple, some prestige cuvee because Jean-Christophe has created um, a champagne to celebrate the birth of each of his children. So yeah, he's got three children, Louise, Marius, and Vitalis. So, we have Amour de Louise, um, which is the bottle that was created for her. Uh, Aura de Marius, the bottle created for Marius. And then we're still waiting for the... Présenter uh, l'énergie de nos enfants dans chaque bouteille. Yeah, he says it represents the energy of his children in each bottle. He only made... Um, yeah, 3,000, about 3,000 bottles of each. Um, so Amour de Louise, for example, is 70% boozy Chardonnay with 30% reserve wine in Solera. Um, Aura de Marius is a single parcel, single parcel wow. boozy 2014 Blanc de Noir. And then the, um, tu vas l'appeler Ange de Vitali, n'est-ce pas? Vitali, ça va sortir et ce sera âme de Vitali. Anne de Vitelli, à la cœur, ils ont changé. Anne de Vitelli, it'll be Anne de Vitelli, and that's going to be a 100% Solera bottle. Wonderful. Well, that's yeah. exciting. Case yeah. And so, again, I think just noting, it's important for people to know that you can, with Delavan, you can taste really, I mean, you can taste the village. If you really want to know what boozy tastes like, you can <laughs> get Delavan right? Yeah. It, you really want to know what boozy boozy tastes like? That's fun. Well, no it, boozy. I'll tell you, no <laughs> boozy than Delavan. Um, and yeah, so it's just such a pleasure. And and I don't think I told people the story. I, I was talking to you, Jean Christophe and Susan, about it. But um, for everybody listening at home, you know, I was so excited when I could finally get the Brut Nature for several reasons. It's delicious wine. It's a great expression of the of boozy. And because when I went and tasted with uh, Jean Christophe three plus years ago before Fizz opened and, and I was just going to great houses and knocking on doors and sending emails and, uh, <laughs> and, and I was tasting everything that you had and I kept hearing about the Brut Nature, but uh, you know, it wasn't on the table. It wasn't on the table and we get to the end of the tasting and, and you know, and I asked about, well, what about the Brut Nature? And then your, your lovely wife uh, said, well, it's not quite ready and you're walking in and out. And, and then I asked you or she asks you and you said, well, it's not quite ready. It's not quite ready. And this was would have been 2017, 2018, or no, probably 17 or 16. It was a, it was a while ago, probably 17. And so then you went and you said, well, hold on, hold on, that's all. And so you went down to the cellar and you brought up the, the, <laughs> what ended up being the first edition, the first vintage, or, you know, the first bottling of the Brut Nature, no label, no tickets. And I feel like it was, I, I feel like it was a clear bottle. Maybe it wasn't, but I, I remember it, I remember it being, clear it could have been wrong but I remember that it had no label and you opening it and us drinking it and you thought it was quite good and so did I and uh <laughs> and here we are today so it's a it's a wonderfully cool small world to get to share uh the champagne again with you Jean-Christophe and Susan to get to be with you both and really share um this great wine that was featured in our club in February um you know with with California and with those stateside because uh, in these times when we can't visit you there, you know, we want to make sure people are knowing about you, hearing about you and, and tasting your wines. And 
you know, I was looking again at the label and this being the base of 12 and 13, I looked when this was disgorged. So this was disgorged in 2019. So that's, I mean, what, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, I mean, that's almost six years this, this had. And it's still so young, the energy, it's so, still so energetic. It's still so lively, so bright. Uh, you know, I, I look forward to tasting this in another five years. I think it's just yeah. going to continue to evolve. And yeah, absolutely. That's you're bringing up a really good point. I mean, I I tell everybody because these are, you know, no malolactic, no oak, yeah. and in in essence, a dual vintage champagne. You can keep them in the cellar. Most non vintage, uh, maybe some of um, some of you out there already know this, but most non vintage, they're going to tell you to drink it within three years because yeah. most non vintage, it's a blend of many different villages or. Um, what have you, um, but because his is so pure and the way, the way he creates it, the techniques he uses, and because it's only those two years, you can keep it in the cellar and yes, it will evolve. I mean, Jean-Christophe has brought out a bottle we tasted. Um, it was like a bottle that he had made, his first bottle that he had made for Y2K. What was that, Jean? Oh. It was 1990, it was 1997, Avec les feux d'artifice que tu avais peint dessus, c'est quelle année ça? 1995. Yeah, and he brought that out and we tasted it one day and because of that no mellow, yeah, you still had that nice freshness. It didn't feel like, you know, that heavy. And because of the low sulfur, you didn't have that, you know, when an old yeah. wine has been sitting closed yeah. for too long, you get that. En fait, on ne fabrique pas, on ne fabrique pas que des bulles. Là, dans tous ces produits-là, vous vous rendez bien compte qu'il y, qu y a des saveurs, il y a du goût, il y a des parfums. Voilà. Mm. On revient justement, c'est un réel vin. C'est un vin qui est champanisé, mais c'est un vin. Yeah, this is a wine. He says, in fact, you, you understand when you taste um, his champagnes, they're not, he's not just a bubble maker. He right. doesn't just, just make bubbles. These are wines. They're yes. made the champagne method, but they are wines above all. Délicat et c'est fait pour vous faire plaisir. Ah. Yeah, and it's for so that you it will ah bah, pour faire plaisir. How do you want to translate that? Yeah, for pleasure. It's for pleasure. It's, for pleasure. it's a pleasure drinking yeah. wine. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, et wonderful. Pour well, vous faire découvrir un, un endroit. Uh, by an endroit de la terre, tout simplement. Yeah, yeah it's to help you discover a certain, a little corner of the earth. Yeah. yeah. Well, on that note, I think that's a beautiful note to end on. It's uh, just been such a pleasure, again, to talk with you both, to share this wine with you both. Um, and I'm sure when things open up, you would love to receive um, guests, and I'm sure we would love to have um, our club members. Anybody, please go to Delavend. They are very easy to get to from either Hans or um, Epernay, about 20 to 25 minutes from both. So yeah. very easy, and you'll get this beautiful view when you go there and some really beautiful wine. So uh, with that, everybody, thank you, Santé, Jean-Christophe. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much today. Uh, again, we've been drinking Delavan, and there's nothing better to drink. Cheers. Nice. We agree. Yeah.